Greetings, my name is Zena Henry. I am the librarian and pro for Bolton High School. And I just wanted to show you how I created a digital portfolio for evaluation. And this is just a, an overview. I created the presentation or the digital portfolio in canva.com and that's C-A-N-V as in victory, A.com. And so I wanna just go through the steps to show you how I created the templates and added the elements or these photos and then also linked these photos to different artifacts. So I started, if we go back to the home page, I started with a blank presentation. So when you go to canva.com, you can sign up for an educator account which will give you all of the professional pictures and so you'll have access to everything in Canva. And in order to create a an educator account, you'll have to email them for uh, the educator account. And basically, I think it's just submitting, your, you're gonna sign up through your SES email address, and then I think you have to submit a photo ID. Um, I'm not sure, but they'll, they'll take you to the steps to get a professional account if you don't already have one. However, if you don't have one and don't wanna go that route, you still have access to a lot of the elements in Canva without the educator account um, or the professional account. You're gonna start with create a design. I created a presentation which is very similar to uh, PowerPoint. However, you can basically do just about anything um, like an Instagram post, um, I, I wouldn't say logo, a flyer, a poster that might just be a little bit bigger than a regular size uh, piece of paper. So I don't know if you wanna do poster or not. Um, even though it's gonna be in a digital format, so it's not going to look as large, or you can do a newsletter. Presentation was just easier for me because of the formatting, and then you can also present in Canva. Um, okay, so once you open up the presentation link, the PowerPoint, you're gonna see that you're gonna have a blank page. You can rename the design, anything that you would like to name it. You could name it Librarian Portfolio 2021 or whatever. Um, you're also going to see that there are several elements down the left hand side in Canva such as templates, uploads, photos, elements, text, styles, music, videos, etc. Um, the templates that you're going to see here when you look at um, templates, these are things that are already pre, uh, I guess pre-made for you. And so if you click on any of these templates or just hover over them, you can see exactly what they pertain. Uh, and basically they have pictures and elements and fonts that you can just use. I didn't use the pre-made templates for the portfolio. I actually uploaded my, um, not my own, but I uploaded different images from Canva. Uh, if you click on uploads, you'll see that these are things that you've uploaded your personal uploads. So anything under uploads is gonna be something that you've uploaded yourself. And this is can be anything from images, videos to audio. And um, these can be uploaded directly from your computer. Some of the things I keep and then I'll delete them. However, there are some things that I do keep such as the SES logo and the um, Bolton logo because these are things that I use on a regular basis. If you click photos, these are not your personal photos. The only personal photos they'll be in uploads so keep that in mind photos are photos that you want to actually use that are from canva so you can search photos and you can search for anything for this particular digital portfolio i search different things like library education classroom and blackboard um, and those that gave me some of the backgrounds that i'll uh, show you that i used in the digital portfolio and then elements are different things. So elements can also be pictures, but they may not be clear photos. So your photos, think about photos as being pictures that someone has actually taken with a camera. Elements could be um, pictures, but it could also be different things such as, um, let me see, flowers. It could be lines or drawings. It could be shapes, uh, frames. It could be stickers, and stickers are things that are usually moving things, so they're gonna be animated. Let's see, also uh, grids. When you look at frames, frames are, if you ever wanna put a picture, 
this is like a background anything that looks like the little cloud and the the grass this lets you know that you can put a picture on top of this and it's going to frame it in here and so just to show you how that looks real quick if i give you a picture of someone and then it puts the picture in here but as you begin to move it it clicks it into the circle of the frame and so it frames it and you can adjust it by double clicking um, and moving it around if it's big enough. We might have to make it bigger to move it around. But it'll put it in this circle. And then once it's in there, it's together and you can move it around. So Canva has a lot of uses. Um, and then text. If you're needing to use text for any reason, uh, which I'm sure you will, you'll be able to use different fonts, uh, different elements you can add effects such as um making things have making your text have a shadow making it highlighted so different things elements again um that was just one thing that i showed you with the frame but you can also use grids if you wanted to put more than one picture and put them all together in a grid format so there's different grids that you can use as well as there's different gradients that you can use if you want to just add different elements to your um, project and keep in mind elements is just that it's adding something some kind of element to your port I mean to your portfolio or to your project so let's start with our first page I wanted all of our my standard pages the ones that have the standards written on them I wanted them to kind of look like a blackboard and you can definitely do anything that you want for your portfolio for me I, that was just what I had and you're welcome to use this as well it has all of the recently used things that I've used which is helpful for me to go through this tutorial with you I use and I just put in a picture for classroom or blackboard and a lot of th different things came up I put in librarian and or library and this is how I got the cover because this is what I use for the first page um, and you don't have to stretch it out basically if you right click in Canva you'll see that you'll have the option to copy, paste, delete. Um, if there's something in front of this, you'll be able to send it to the back. If it's something behind it, you'll be able to bring it forward. Or you can set the whole image as background, which keeps you from having to expand it, which is what I did for the front page, which looks like um, a bunch of books in a library that are stacked. If you don't want it, you can detach it from background or you can delete it. So I'm gonna start with not just the first cover page, um, I'm going to start with, um, or well, I guess we could start with a cover page. It's, I'm just going to do this library cover. And then I'm going to add text just to say what this is. Um, librarian portfolio. And you can change the color of different things. There are many different things that you can do in Canva. You can also change the color of the background. So if you just highlight the background picture, you can change it to just a plain background. If you don't want that uh, picture or you can undo it. Or if you want to put an effect or filter on the picture, you can, um, I'm not sure what any of these mean like whimsical retro it just changes the different look the dare make it street or grayscale drama we'll just keep it on whimsical and then we want to add another page so you can add a page here or you can duplicate a page which is going to copy the page that you're on um, or you can add presenter notes because again we're in the port uh, the presenter uh, element or presenter project, excuse me, which is like uh, PowerPoint. I'm just going to add a blank page. And then this would be my first page where I would put my standard. And I'm going to go back to photos again and just select the same picture that I selected for my actual background, which was a blackboard uh, with a, the brown floor. And then I just set it for background image. And then you can double click it. I wanted more of the chalkboard to be seen. So I just brought that down a little bit, less of the floor. And then I added text and I added um, standard one. And 
and you can just center that and put the rest of the standard or however you want to do your portfolio. So here, because I knew I was going to be duplicating this several times because we have four standards, I did duplicate the page. So I just went here and I just hit duplicate, duplicate page, and then duplicate page. And then if you want to move your pages around in presentation, you can go down at the bottom where it says grid view. And when you click that, it brings up a view that just gives you the tiles and you can just hold them and move them around. You know, so if you wanted something in a different place at this point, they can stay where they are because we haven't added the artifact pages. And so the get back, you just X that out. And then we want to add an artifact page. So basically we're going to go to add a page, which would be another blank page. Then we're going to go back to photos and I'm going to just add a page. I just use a plain blackboard page for the artifacts, set it as background, added a text to just say artifacts and move that up to the middle. And notice that the pink lines that come up on the page that kind of tell you where the middle of the page is, where your frame is of the page. So if you wanted something outside the frame or inside the frame, so as you're moving something, it, it gives you some direction on how to move page, things around in the page. I went to elements next to add artifact um, pictures because these are things like whatever you're adding, say you're adding uh, a PowerPoint, say you're gonna add a file, say you're gonna add a link uh, to something where you want someone to click on it. It was just helpful for me to add little pictures to give my principal an idea of these are things that you might want to click on. And so a lot of things that I use um, were books because of course we're librarians. I use this picture, which is a picture of uh, kind of like, looks like a play button for a video. And so you, it comes up in this color black. However, you can change the color so it would show up better and I changed it to a gray color so you could just see it a little better on this chalkboard. And you can also resize it. You can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. So keep that in mind as well. And then you can add some text above it if you wanted to just kind of explain what it is. I did the smaller text and you um, just kind of put that on top of it or however you want, wherever you want to place it and then just add your text and you can move the text around. You can make it smaller. You can make the font bigger. You can change the font. So there are a lot of things that you can do in Canva. It kind of reminds me of publisher just upgraded. Um, if everyone remembers Microsoft publisher, uh, the next thing that I added was a file and this again is in elements. So I added a file folder. And again, it comes up in black. So I had to change the color to gray and then resize it. And if you put it next to your other picture, it'll tell you that it's lined up at the top, but maybe not so at the bottom. And so you can get it lined up and then you can move it over. And then you can add text or you can click the text that you already have and you can right click, copy and paste it. Then you'll have another one or you can click the text that you have and go up here to the corner and hit duplicate, duplicate, and that'll duplicate the text. And so here, then you can change this to file or whatever it is and give an explanation. Um, then there are some other things, some other elements that you can add. If you wanted to add a PowerPoint, you're going to just line that up and it doesn't have to be you can put them anywhere on the page. It, I didn't, you didn't have to have any kind of format for this and then just change this or give an explanation to what this is. Now, when you're adding your links to your, um, because with this up just like this, and then you hit present, this doesn't, uh, have any links attached to it. These are just pictures. So if you wanted to add a link to where your principal would click on it and then be able to see, what you're actually trying to show her, say a video or a file or a PowerPoint, 
and you would click on this and notice once you click on the picture or the element that a bar comes up at the top. This is your link bar. So you wanna click the link bar and then insert your link to wherever you're linking, whatever external website you're linking it to. And so one of the things that you wanna keep in mind, um, something that April mentioned when she was trying to show my uh, digital portfolio is that some of the links weren't working or she didn't have access to them. So you wanna make sure that your links are links that work such as if you're gonna show a video, you wanna make sure that you've tested the link, that it is an external link, that maybe it's linked to a YouTube video because those um, pretty much will play. Uh, my video was linked to a Flipgrid video that I downloaded and um, it was an MP4 and I'm trying to remember what format I put it in. Um, I think I saved it in SharePoint or in, uh, excuse me, not SharePoint, but uh, OneDrive. And so if you're uh, linking things from OneDrive, most of the time those links will work because your principal is an SES uh, employee and so she has access to OneDrive. Um, so I would suggest a lot of times you have to have some type of file storage. And so linking it to OneDrive is probably the best way to be able to see those files. And then when you're linking something from OneDrive, basically you're going to uh, share it and share the link, okay? And basically that's it. You can put some other decorative features on here if you want, if you wanted to add some other elements such as uh, some gradient pit and then change the color of some of these things, you could or if you wanted to add some different text font, I added another, um, I added text and then I kind of changed it to play script, which is one of my favorite, playlist script, excuse me, one of my favorite fonts. And then I just added um, different things that were pertaining to the standards and then I just move them around and put them sideways. So you can definitely add a, a lot of different features when you're creating your digital portfolio. I hope that was helpful to show you how to use um, Canva. And when you get ready to present this or share it with your principal, you can share with a share link. And so I would just change this instead of share a link to edit, share a link to view. So you can copy the link or you could download it um, and you could download it in a number of different formats. You could download it as a PDF, which definitely will allow your links to still work. So um, if you download it as a JPEG or a PNG file, it is the links are not going to work. So keep that in mind that your links will work as a PDF. And so that's probably the format that you wanna stick with is a PDF format. Um, you could very well also transfer it to a Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, you could do that, or you could embed it somewhere. Um, and I downloaded it as a PDF and then uploaded it to FlipSnack, which kind of, FlipSnack is basically just another online site that allows you to look at uh, pages like you would look at them in a magazine. And so it kind of flips the pages for you. However, when I um, realized that we were going to be uploading this into the PLZ uh, in EduGoodies, the PLZ uh, evaluation format, it probably uh, was no need for me to upload this in FlipSnack because that really wasn't the format that it needed to be. It needed to be in just a regular file. And so in order for that to happen, I needed to leave it in the PDF file. And so basically just downloading this as a PDF um, is probably the best route to go because your links will still work and you can upload it in Please. All right, and I again, I hope this is helpful. If there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer those questions for you. Thank you.